Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. We're going to enter Chapter 4 of this playlist, which I'm going to call the Multivariate Normal Distribution. Now, every multivariate technique that we're going to discuss relies heavily on this multivariate normal distribution. So, it's important that we understand it and we understand many of the properties associated with it. So, let's first look at the univariate normal density. And if you've made it this far into the playlist, you're probably familiar with it. Why? And this tilde means distributed as a normal random variable with mean mu and, and variance sigma squared. Now, the density associated of y is f of y, and it's this. And, um, and this is typically what you see, but I'm going to rewrite it a little bit into this form. And the reason is... You know, the constants out front. Oh, and they are constants, right? Because sigma squared and mu are population parameters, which don't change. And so these are what's called normalizing constant. And that's what forces the, the, uh, the density to integrate to 1. And so we have e raised to this exponent, minus 1 half. And then I rewrote the, the uh, exponent to look like a quadratic form. And it is a quadratic form in one dimension. So this is uh, Mahalanobis distance squared, you know, this quadratic form. Now, we'll illustrate the normal curve. The R code we're not going to review but I will copy and paste it into the comments section as always. And so these are typical curves, normal densities for different means and standard deviations. And these represent of where the data are likely to be. The probability is highest when the data, you know, around minus four for this blue curve. The standard deviation or variance associated with it describes how spread out this data are. Now, the multivariate normal density, we say y is distributed as uh, uh, multivariate normal, dimension p, mean vector mu, and variance, mat variance covariance matrix sigma. Now, some just call it a covariance matrix, so that either is fine. And if we look at the density, it's actually very similar. We have these constants out front, which are called normalizing constants which makes the area under this curve uh, integrate to 1. Um, the, we have e raised to the minus 1 half times this quadratic form. Uh, p is, of course, the number of variables that we collect on each unit, or the, you know, the dimensions of the vector. Mu is the mean vector. Sigma is the covariance matrix. Now, note the quadratic form in the exponent. And it's, it's the squared Mahalanobis distance from y to mu. And this creates ellipsoid-shaped contours. We'll illustrate it in the bivariate setting, which is p equals 2 below. But this is it. This is the density. So you enter values into this uh, curve, which are the y's. And then it calculates a, a number, which is associated with the probability of that uh, you know, vector happening. So let's let's look at this when n equals two, and let's see if I can put both curves on the screen. And I really can't. So you're just going to have to remember that uh, this is sigma. These are vectors. This is a, a covariance matrix, and and so this is it. So really, we just put it for p equals two into each of these. And then this is the determinant of this matrix. Oh, actually, let me go back. Notice that. It's the determinant of sigma. That's the generalized variance associated with this d density. And what that is, it, it, it's really proportional. The, the, the square root of the determinant is associated with the volume of this density. And so we're dividing by that volume, which sort of forces it back to one. That's why it's a normalizing constant. Okay, so we're back here in the bivariate setting. And this quadratic form in the exponent, you can expand. And that's what this expansion is here. I had to wrap it to two lines to fit on the screen. 
the determinant of a two by two is the product of these diagonals minus the product of, of the off diagonal. And this is it. This is what we get. And it's actually worth your time to go through this once and prove it to yourself that you can go from this first equation to the second equation. So at some point, pause the video, write it down, and prove it to yourself that it's that it is correct. Um, rho, of course, it was the correlation between these. And notice we sprinkle it in. Instead of having lots of uh, covariances and variances, it simplifies it to just put rho in the in the formula. Now we'll. Here's the R code of the R illustration that I'm going to cover. We're not going to review that, but as always, I'll copy and paste it into the comment section. All right, so here is on the right, we'll look at the right one first. It's the density plot for bivariate normal distribution centered at some values. I think it's zero and zero. Yeah. And the correlation is one. Actually, let's look at the variance too. Variance is four, so standard deviation of two. Now notice that it's it's there's a big hump. It's bell-like shaped, you know, but in the button but in two dimensions instead of one. And this describes the probability of the data being around specific points. Okay. Now, if we were to walk around this curve, okay. So let's back up. So you enter two values, a y1 and y2, and then you get a z value, which is the density value. Now, if we were to walk around this curve at levels that are constant, so the same probability or the same z value, that's actually what these contours describe. We're walking around this curve at constant levels. That's a contour plot of this bivariate normal distribution. So notice the shape of this curve is very, you know, if you were to walk around, it's very circle-like, you know, there's not much correlation. Now, if you squint your eyes and, you know, you can sort of see that there's, these are, you know, ellipses instead of circles. If the correlation was zero, these would be perfect circles. Now, notice that the, the volume of the biggest one, you know, it's some volume. But, and so we can calculate the generalized variance for this density. Now, this is a population parameter because we're using sigma and not the sample. But we get a value of 15.84. That's the generalized variance associated with this bivariate normal with a correlation of 1. You know, variance is 4 means vector 0. Okay. Now, let's change it a little bit and let the correlation be 0.8. So the there's a positive linear relationship and you can see this curve is sort of smashed in and, and it's sort of diagonal like on the right side and that has to do with the correlation between y1 and y2 now we can also walk around this curve at constant levels so we can find the y1 and y2 that keep the z value the same or the density value the same and that's what this contour plot is so now Notice that the contour plots of constant probabilities are, are uh, ellipsi, if that's the right word, ellipses. And that's it. You can kind of see that this is really, it's bell curve like. And any, you know, any marginal, if we only look at it from the Y1, this will be exactly bell curved. If we look at it from Y2, it'll be bell curved. But together it creates this plot. Now, notice that the volume associated with the largest ellipse, right, that is actually smaller than the volume associated with this ellipse, right? So the generalized variance associated with this is going to be smaller, right? So it's 5.6 as opposed to 15. And so that's what the generalized variance is describing. It's the volume of that ellipse to encompass the data. And, and again, this is this is intuitive interpretations of these values. Okay, and so we're going to end this section. We're approaching 10 minutes. We'll end it by noting that all the multivariate techniques discussed will definitely be based on this multivariate normal distribution. Okay, and so we're going to spend two, three, four, maybe five more videos on the multivariate normal distribution. So hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one.
Thanks. Bye.